Hello, and welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today is Friday in the fifth week of Lent. The opening hymn is number four, This Day God Gives Me. Number four, verse three. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good afternoon. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pardon the offenses of your peoples, we pray, O Lord, and in your goodness set us free from the bonds of the sins we have committed in our weakness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side, denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me, like a mighty champion, my persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame. 
to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe the mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Breakers of death surge round about me. The destroying floods overwhelmed me. The cords of the netherworld enmeshed me. The snares of death over. I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. From his temple he heard my voice and reached his ears. In my distress,
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said you are gods? If it calls them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Then they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but everything John said about this man was true. And many there began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. If you listen carefully to the readings for today, we can see that we come face to face with one of the big challenges in religion. The religious leaders and their associates are plotting to do in Jeremiah. They mock him, making fun of his prophecies, terror on every side. Denounce? Let us denounce him. They are more numerous and apparently more powerful than he is. Jeremiah doesn't seem to stand a chance. The religious leaders and their associates of Jesus' day have cornered him and are picking up rocks ready to stone him to death. They mount their attack against this supposedly blasphemous man and danger to society at large. They are more numerous and apparently more powerful than he is. Jesus doesn't seem to stand a chance. On Tuesday, we heard the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and how Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had them thrust into a fiery furnace heated seven times more than usual to burn them to death. The three young men were completely unconcerned and even taunted the king by saying, O king, he, meaning God, will save us. And even if he does not, then you must know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the statue you have erected. These three young men are not simply uppity upstarts who don't have the good sense to care for their lives. They have been well taught and from experience have learned the truth about God which they cannot deny. This is a very important point. They are well taught and have learned by experience the truth about God. And once knowing the truth about God, they cannot deny it. Jeremiah didn't call himself and is speaking the words God gave him to speak for the salvation of the people. If we recall the call of Jeremiah, God is calling him and he's saying, oh no, I can't do this. I'm just a kid. 
I'm too young, I'll call somebody else. If you notice in the scriptures, this is almost always the theme. God calls a person and their first thing is, oh no, 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 you must have somebody else in mind. I'm not making myself a prophet, but I could tell you my immediate response to God's calling me is, you must have the wrong number. Because I was not interested in what he was calling me to do. And Jeremiah eventually pulled himself together and spoke God's words to the people for their salvation. They were words given to him for them. Jesus clearly and repeatedly said that he does nothing of himself but what the Father has taught him. He says, the one who sent me is truthful and what I have learned from him, I declare to the world. So not even Jesus himself says, it's all about me and my opinions and deep set feelings. He says, I repeat to you what the Father has told me for your salvation. You see the pattern. The prophet doesn't say, I've got a great idea. I think this will work. We've got to do in those people or anything like that. They're somewhat hesitant. And then later on, God overpowers them and they go out to preach the word from God for the salvation of other people. It's not for their own selves. The leaders and their associates of both Jeremiah and Jesus' time are completely unaware that their religion is not even about God, nor does it originate in God, but serves their own selfish interest. Their religion seems very pious, steeped in, in, in their own interpretation of scripture and tradition, completely oblivious. In the name of God, they threaten to assassinate God's prophet and ultimately crucify the incarnation of God. And we should see in this a real warning about mounting our own crusade. We often get very strong feelings and now we're picking up our banner and we're gonna do in those terrible infidels, those bad people who don't get it right. And we're gonna correct all this wrongdoing and we're gonna set things straight. But is it necessarily of God or does it come from someplace else? Pseudo-religious certainty, cloaked in all that is well and good, has killed off millions upon millions of people throughout the ages. Only authentic, true God-centeredness grounded in humility can expose and dethrone the false gods we constantly create and serve for all the right reasons. Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Let us stand to pray as we continue our Lenten journey we bring our needs to the Lord with trust and confidence for all members of the church may God continue to help us learn to die to ourselves and seek first the good of others let us pray to the Lord for peace in our world May the Holy Spirit imprint on our hearts God's transforming peace and love. Let us pray to the Lord. For families who suffer discord, may God's mercy work in and through them to bring about reconciliation and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. For this faith community, both present and virtual, 
May we be blessed with the fruits of the Holy Spirit in our work and ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Virginia Ramirez, for whom this Mass is offered, may they soon come to share in the Almighty God, as you once heard the prayers and supplications of your Son, hear now our prayers and petitions. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O merciful God, that we may be worthy to serve ever fittingly at your altars and there to be saved by constant participation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us now pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. communion hymn is number 732, The Lord is My Light, number 732. Oh. 
Let us pray. May the unfailing protection of the sacrifice we have received never leave us, O Lord, and may it always drive far from us all that would do us harm. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. And have a most blessed day. Thank you. The closing hymn is number 780, Singing Songs of Expectation, number 780.